Hey, it's Pastor Tim, the online campus pastor here at Northwest Church, and I am so glad you decided to join us on YouTube today. We have an exciting message for you today, so make sure you are engaged, leaned in, and taking notes. And if you haven't yet, make sure to like and share the video. Also remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can stay up to date with all things happening here on the YouTube channel. Now let's jump into the sermon. It's an honor to be here today and a treat to be to spend the weekend at this incredible church, like Pastor Joe said, we had an amazing time at the real event and have loved seeing familiar faces um, at the church. And just what a great place. You have an incredible team staff and all the, the volunteers. Amazing. You can tell that you love this place. And um, well, no better, better place to be than at church, right? In God's house. And I know God has something for us because anytime we come to his house, he's always prepared. He's always waiting. And so I believe he has a word for not just the mom. Shout out once again to the moms in the house. I sent my mom a text this morning um, and she sent me a text back, said praying for you. And then actually at the 10 o'clock, my grandparents are going to be here. So my grandma is going to be in the house, but shout out to all the moms. But I believe that God has a word for every single person here today because his word is for all of us, right? His word is applicable to each one of our lives and no matter what season or stage you're in, you might, you might not be a mom. You might desire to be a mom and you know God knows the desires of your heart. You might be you know, young, you might be older. It doesn't matter what season of life you're in, God's word applies and he wants to speak something fresh and something new to you today, and I've been praying. I've been so excited to be here because um, I just know God has something for us today, so I want you to get out your Bibles. I love that they pass out notes, you know, something to write down notes with. I actually put down the time that I need to be done, so if I, it, you know, it's a good reminder of it right here, <laughs> um, but I believe God's going to speak to us today, and it's going to be an awesome day, and the title of the message today is Strong and Immovable. Turn to your neighbor and say, Strong and Immovable. We'll see who's awake this morning. Who had their coffee? Oh, yeah. I heard you, have, you had your coffee this morning right here. I could hear her talking back. Strong and Immovable. You know, God desires, his desire is that we would be strong. Be strong in the Lord. I think about Joshua 1.9. That God said to Joshua, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. God didn't call us to be weak Christians. He didn't call us to just get saved and then stop. He said, no, I want you to be strong in me. I want you not just to be strong. I want you to be immovable. I want you to be able to withstand the storms of life. I want you in every season to flourish, not just in certain seasons, not just in summer and spring when it's sunny and it's easy. No, in every single season of life, God wants us to flourish. And what does that look like? I love that Psalms 92 shows us a picture. I'm a very visual person. Anyone else visual? Like I see in pictures. And I love that the Bible doesn't just, God doesn't just say, be this. No, he shows us, okay, what do you mean? Give me a visual and then tell me how. That God explains to us how in scripture. And Psalms 92 says this, but the godly, are there any godly people in the house? Oh, that was weak. Are there any, any godly people? Anyone who loves God here? Okay, okay, that's good. But the godly will flourish like a palm tree. Yes, take me there. California, Florida, hallelujah. And grow strong like cedars of Lebanon, for they are transplanted to the Lord's house. They flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. They will remain vital and green. They will declare, the Lord is just. He is my rock. In this passage, there's two visuals that the psalmist gives us about what it means to be strong and immovable. And they're trees. I love trees. I love like, I love plants. I love flowers. I love nature. I've really enjoyed being actually in Bentonville. I, this is my first time in Bentonville, guys. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to come. And we went, we went to Crystal Bridges and we walked around. It's just so beautiful. All the trails, the flowers. It's such a pretty season here. And I love that. And the psalmist gives us a visual, two visuals 
of trees. And it, Psalms 92, 12 says this, but the godly will flourish like a palm tree. Why a palm tree? Why out of all the trees, all the plants, did the psalmist pick palm tree? Huh. And when you study palm tree, and we're going to put up, like, those, aren't they just beautiful? Palm trees are so pretty. But palm trees weren't just like, oh, that's a, that's a pretty tree, you know, we're just going to pick it randomly. No, the psalmist knew that a palm tree was a symbol for the Jewish people. It represented fruitfulness. It, rep it represented steadfastness. It represented health, longevity, victory. Palm trees were prominent on the walls and the doors and the pillars of King Solomon's temple. And kings and conquerors, they were welcome when they would enter a city. Think about Jesus. He entered Jerusalem. What did they lay at his feet? They laid palm trees because it represented victory. Palm trees were a symbol of strength and dignity and victory because they're sturdy trees. They're very durable. Have you ever been watching the Weather Channel? And there's a hurricane. And the weatherman is standing in front of palm trees. And the palm trees are going like this. And, and it's like crazy wind. It could be a gust of 145 miles an hour. Palm trees going to withstand that. And you're looking at those palm trees and you're like, what is that weatherman doing? He better get out of there. He's crazy. <laughs> But the palm tree is so sturdy. It's so durable. It can, it can withstand the winds and life. Palm trees also, they can, they flourish in seasons of drought. It doesn't matter where you stick a palm tree. It can flourish in the desert. And it, it can flourish in many different types of terrain. I actually looked up a picture. There was a palm tree covered in snow. It was green still. That's amazing, right? That's steadfast. That's a picture of flourishing no matter where you're planted. And then palm trees are one of the most useful plants. They yield coconuts, palm oil, sugar, dates. They use palm trees to make houses, boats, baskets, furniture, and many, many other things. There's like a list of like 20 or 30 things that you can make out of palm trees. They are super useful. And then cedar trees, you know, why you're like, okay, palm tree, I get it. But why a cedar tree? Psalms 92, 12, grow strong like cedars in Lebanon. You know, cedars were considered valuable. They were considered strong. They were considered, they had an aromatic smell. So, so a lot of actually kings used them to build their palaces back in biblical times. You think about Solomon. He imported, imported cedars to build his palace. It was a valuable wood, actually very sought after wood. And a very sturdy wood, it would last for years and years and years. So when the Bible says, be like a palm tree, be like a cedar tree, again, it's not just random, but it's because they're lush, they're sturdy, they're sought after, they're useful. And God's saying, you know what? I want my people to be sturdy. I want my people to be sought after. My people are valuable like a cedar. You know, some of you need to be reminded of your value today. God says, you're valuable. You're precious to me. You're sought after. I seek after you. I want you. I have a purpose for you. You might say, my life doesn't have any purpose. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. You're like a palm tree. I want to use you. I have a purpose for you. But you know what? In order to be sturdy and immovable, we have to take initiative in our lives. It doesn't just happen. A tree doesn't just flourish on its own. I think about this, this little plant I have. Isn't it cute? All the girls are like, oh, yes. You guys are like, no, it's not. It's not cute. <laughs> this is called a succulent, everyone, okay? Um, and it looks like it's dying. It actually made the trip with me in my car. I actually left it in my car all weekend. Poor, poor plant. Um, I, I did think it was dying. I, I have it in my office. I usually just buy succulents because I kill everything else. Uh, they're supposed to be the easiest plants to take care of. Um, and I thought it was dying because it's getting brown and everything. And someone walked into my office and she said, I, or we were talking, I said, I think my plant is dying. And she's like, actually, it's not. She's like, we thought it was dying too. And we looked it up online. This particular succulent, I didn't even know how she knew what to look up online. But this particular succulent, she said it's an endangered succulent. <laughs> I'm like, okay. 
awesome. She said, actually, this is how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to look like it's dying, and then it has new growth. But, you know, the thing with succulents is you don't have to water them a lot. So praise the Lord. That's why I bought it. This usually just gets water when a water bottle is sitting on my desk, and I haven't drank it, and I'm like, okay, I have a little extra water. I'll pour it in there. That's when this gets watered. But and sometimes we treat, though, our walk with God like a succulent. We're like, we set it to the side. Ah, that's fine. We know Jesus. We're, we can make it. It'll be good. Oh, I have a little water. I'll water my soul just a little bit. I'll just pour into myself just a little bit. And, you know, we can't expect to grow and flourish. This is not us. God's like, I don't want you to be that. I want you to be a palm tree. I want you to be a cedar. I want you to take initiative on strengthening yourself in the Lord. You know, Psalms, not Psalms, excuse me, 1 Samuel 36, it says, David strengthened himself in the Lord. King David learned the importance of strengthening himself in the Lord. Why? Because he knew that his help came from the Lord, that he had to own the responsibility to strengthen himself so that he would be strong and immovable. And I want to give you four simple characteristics on what that looks like in scripture. How do we do that? How do we strengthen ourselves in the Lord? God wants you to go from strength to strength to strength. You might feel strong today, but God's like, I don't want you to stay there. I want you to get stronger in me. I want you to move forward in me. I have more for you. So how do we own that? How do we strengthen ourselves in the Lord? And the first thing is praise. Praise strengthens us in the Lord. You know, with a service, we don't just, the pastor, Pastor Joe doesn't just say, you know, we'll just have some worship because, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. No, we worship because we know when we worship, we get stronger. That there's strength that comes to us when we acknowledge God's power, it, we actually get stronger in him. God deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. We were created to praise. But God doesn't want us just to worship him because he knows, you know, he deserves it. He wants us to worship him because he knows it benefits us. He is a good God, a faithful God. He knows when my people are in my presence, and not just sitting, but they're participating, they're worshiping me, their eyes are on me, it strengthens them. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord look to and fro to strengthen the hearts of those who are fully committed to him. You know, God this morning is like, man, my people are in my house. I see them. He sees you here today. You being here makes you stronger. You might have walked in feeling weak, but as you lift your hands and as you say, God, I declare your goodness. God, you're faithful. I might feel weak, but you are strong and you're going to give me strength. Let the weak say I am strong because of what the Lord has done. When we fix our eyes on him, we begin to worship him and declare his power and declare who we are. You know, when we worship him, we remind ourselves of who we are, right? We're like, oh, yeah, I'm a child of God. Oh, yeah, God's on my side. Oh, yeah, he's going to help me. There's power in our worship. There's a strength that comes through our worship. And God says, worship me. And I encourage you, don't wait to church, come to church to worship God. Turn worship music on in your car. You're going to work and you're feeling, man, this day is too much for me. Put that worship music on. Doesn't Who cares what other people think around you? Just don't get in a wreck, okay? Hands on the wheel, hands on the wheel. <laughs> but you lift up your voice. Allow God's presence to fill your car. Allow God's presence to fill your office. Allow God's presence to fill your home. And watch your worship strengthen you. Watch it feed your soul. You know trees, they can gravitate towards the sun. You can see a tree at times grow crooked so it can get towards the sun. Why? Because it needs the sun, right, to be healthy, to grow. That's what we should be. We should gravitate. We should say, I want to be in God's presence. I want to worship him. God, wherever you are, I want to be there. I want to worship you, God, because I know as I worship you, you're going to strengthen me. You're going to feed me. And then the second thing, how do we get strong in the Lord? We feed on the promises of God. All God's promises are yea and amen. Do you know how many promises are in the Bible? Anyone want to take a guess? Anyone? There are over 7,000 
promises for you and me. 7,000 promises. Can you believe that? That God has so many promises for us. And promises are like nutrients to our soul. You know, a, a tree has to be planted. And it can't just be planted in any type of soil. It has to be planted in a soil that it's going to get nutrients. And it's not just enough to be planted, but the roots have to be deep. The deeper the roots are, the more nutrients the tree is going to get. You know what? The deeper we are in the word, the stronger we're going to get. If we just get our word on Sundays, why? If we, some of us are wondering why we're weak. We're just getting nutrients on Sunday. Do you imagine if you only ate once a week? You would be weak, okay? Just as much as you need food for your body, you need the word for your soul. You need God's word. You need a feast on the promises of God. You need to speak the promises of God. In order to speak them over your life, you have to know the promises of God. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Plans not to harm you. That's the promise for you. You might think, no, that's a promise for them. No, that's a promise for you today. That's God's promise. Joshua 1, 9 already said this. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you. God is with you. Philippians 4, 19. And my God, you know, he's your personal God. He's your God. My God will meet all my needs. How many, how many needs? All. all. Not just some, right? Yeah. He will meet all my needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus. James 1.5. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. That's just a couple of promises. But don't those just encourage you? As I read those, man, I'm, my faith is built this morning. I encourage you, feast on the promises of God. You know, there's promises that are for all of us, and then there's promises that God wants to give you specifically. And maybe God has given you a promise, and maybe you've held on to it and it hasn't come to pass. Don't grow weary. Trust God. Hold on to that promise. There's, there's two passages in, in the Bible that God has given me that have, have fed my soul for years, not months, not weeks, years. And I'm holding on to them. I feel like God's spoken them. What is the promise God has given you? What's your personal promise? Are you watering that promise? Are you praying over that promise? Or are you just waiting for it to happen? You know, God needs our participation. He has promises for us. But we actually have to walk in faith and say, God, you've spoken this over me. I'm going to walk in faith. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to walk it out on the daily, God. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to keep trusting you. I'm going to keep living for you. I'm going to keep persevering because God is true to his promises. There's not one promise that he won't be faithful to. He just needs our cooperation. Psalms 145, 13. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all he does. I think I changed that, in all his works. Kind in all his works. God is faithful he will be true to his promises. But we have to hide his word, hide his promises in our heart to feed our soul. They're food for our soul. We need his word daily. Daily having his word feed us. And then as we feed our soul with his promises, we'll be strengthened in him. And the third point is pruning. It's not, it's not as quite as fun, is it? Pruning. <coughs> pruning. But you know why a gardener prunes a plant? To make it grow. She's got it. To make it grow. It's not because a gardener's out to get a plant. <laughs> you know, sometimes we can think God is out to get us. We're like, God, why, why are you teaching me this lesson? He's like, because I love you. Because I have more for you. And if you stayed where you're at and you kept making this stupid decision and these mistakes over and over again, you wouldn't get here. You wouldn't get to the promise I have for you. But if you yield to me, if you surrender to me and allow me to prune you, allow me to change you, allow me to help you see some things differently in your life. You know, God wants to take you to a new place. Maybe there's a new season God has for you. And you're like, why isn't this happening? And God's saying, let me work in that area of your life. You're not ready for it. 
I want to work on your character. I want to develop that in you. And if you would surrender and yield, you, you would open the door for me to prepare you for that next season. John 15, 1 says this, I'm the true vine, and my father is the gardener. I love how he used Jesus uses his father, good father. He's a gardener. He doesn't use, he doesn't say, and God is the gardener. He says, my father is the gardener. God is gentle. God is good. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. God desires that you would bear more fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. I think about a rose bush. They are so, so pretty. And I, I've like, you know, seen different people pruning them. Um, my, my parents have some rose bushes. My grandparents do too. And, you know, at first when you get, they get pruned, you're like, oh, it's so sad. They look so sad. But you know what? The next season, the blooms, the buds on the, the, the rose bushes, they wouldn't have been there if they wouldn't have been pruned. Yield to the pruning process that God has for you. He desires that we be made more into his image. And in order to do that, we have to say, God, I need to decrease so that you can increase. God, cut parts off of me off of my heart that don't please you, God. Reveal things in me, God, motives and desires that are not of you so that I can bring you glory, so that I can become more like you, more in your image, and bear more fruit. More fruit, God. That's his desire. And we're strengthened. You would think it would be weakened, but it's not. It strengthens the plant. God wants to strengthen you as you yield to him and say, God, I offer myself as a living sacrifice. God, I'm not mine, I'm yours, you're the gardener. Take complete control, God, change me. And maybe even this moment, God's speaking to you and he's saying, hey, I wanna do these things in your life. And maybe you've been fearful, you said, I can't give up that, or I don't know how this is gonna work. God is a good gardener. And as you yield to him, you know what? You're gonna watch blessing upon your life. That's the only reason he wants to work in your life and prune areas of your life because he wants you to experience his blessing and his favor. And I'm going to invite the team up. Is that, is that okay? The last point is filled with his power. Filled with his power. You know, trees need water. If they don't have a certain amount of water, they will die. They have to have water. And the same is for you and I. We need to be filled, overflowing with God's presence. He doesn't want to just drizzle his presence on us, but he wants to fill us overflowing with his power. You know, we're called to demonstrate God's power and God's presence on earth. We're called to be a representation of who he is to people around us. There are people around us who are dying. They're dying spiritually. They're in a drought, not just in a season, but their whole life is a drought. And God has said, you know what? I want you to be filled with my presence, my people to be filled with my presence, so that when other people bump into you, they're refreshed. They're, they're craving. They don't know what they're craving, but they're craving. They're parched. They're spiritually parched. And I want you to give them living water. He's called us to do that. But in order for us to do that, we have to be filled up with his presence. We can't run on empty. We have to run on full. Not just full. Actually, God wants us to be overflowing with his presence. You know, rain in scripture, a lot of times, is a symbol for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. God desires that the Holy Spirit would overflow through us, that we'd be so full of the presence of God, that we would operate in the power of God, that when we walk into situations, when we talk to people, they'd be changed by his presence. Isaiah 44 says this, for I will pour down rain on the thirsty. Is anyone thirsty here? Anyone want more of God? Oh, I hope so. And open up streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing upon your descendants. Acts 2, 17. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. 
Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. God desires to pour out his spirit. He desires to fill us. And, and I just encourage you, you know, maybe you're like, I'm a Christian. I thought that was enough. No, 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 no. God wants you to be overflowing with his presence. Or maybe you you're just feel dry. God's like, I want to rain down on you. I want to refresh you today. I want to strengthen you. But the truth for all of us is God wants us to overflow with his presence and his power. He, it's his desire for us to walk in an open heaven. An open heaven. We have constant access to his power and his presence. No matter where we are, no matter what we're walking through, we can say, God, fill me up. God, I need you. God, I'm feeling weak. God, strengthen me. And he's doing that not just for us, but so that we can share his power with a dying world around us. God wants to use you. He wants to refresh you, not just to refresh you, but he wants to refresh you to use you, to share his power and his presence so that Bentonville, Fayetteville, Rogers, and beyond, they can experience the life-transforming power of Jesus that is in you. I want to leave you with this verse, Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. This is the Apostle Paul's prayer for the church. And it's still true today. This is God's heart for you. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power, power, to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep is his love. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. I pray that from his glorious and limited resources, he will empower you. And I think I had that verse twice. But you know what? God's desire is that we would be strong in him. His desire is that we would know him, that we'd be immovable, every single one of us, so that we can experience his blessing on our life, that we can be used by him and bring him glory. Can we bow our heads and close our eyes? Again, we want to thank you for joining us here on YouTube. And if you have made a decision to follow Christ today, make sure to leave a comment down below or to let us know at northwestchurch.tv. Well, if God has encouraged and strengthened you through this message, make sure to share this video with your friends, and we'll see you next time.